Hi, I am Frank Morris, and this is another tip of the week from studythecode.com. Today, we're going to talk about the requirements in the 2006 International Building Code as it relates to having two or more buildings on the same lot. If you have a code book available, I would recommend you use it in conjunction with this video. The two code sections we're going to discuss today are sections 503.1.2, and 704.3 buildings on the same lot. When you have two more buildings on the same lot, you can treat them either as separate buildings or you can treat them as one building. In treating buildings as separate buildings, you will establish an imaginary lot line between each building. The purpose of this imaginary lot line is to make sure the buildings are properly protected depending on their fire separation distance as outlined in Table 602 entitled Fire Resistance Rating Requirements for Exterior Walls Based on Fire Separation Distance. In this example, we have two buildings. The one on the left is an A3 assembly occupancy, which is a pool hall. The building on the right is a B or business occupancy, which is an insurance office. Both buildings are of type 5B construction. We have arbitrarily established a imaginary lot line exactly halfway between the two buildings, which makes the fire separation distance of each building to the imaginary lot line of five feet. By going to table 602, I look at the second row, which is where the fire separation distance is from five feet to less than 10 feet. I follow this row over to the last column where both occupancies a and B are shown. The table shows that the exterior wall on each of these buildings next to the imaginary lot line are required to be a minimum of one hour fire resistant rated. Let's say the building on the right is an existing building and the exterior wall is already a minimum of one hour fire resistant rated. Our best bet would be to move the imaginary lot line to the existing exterior wall where we have a zero lot line on the existing building. By having a zero lot line on the existing building, the fire separation distance to the new building on the left will be 10 feet. In looking at table 602, we look at the first row where the fire separation distance is zero to less than five feet. We look at the column where a B business occupancy is, and we are required to have a minimum of a one hour fire resistant rated exterior wall, which we already have on the existing building. Then we look at the third row of table 602 where the fire separation distance is from 10 feet to less than 30 feet. We follow the row over to the column where the A assembly occupancy is with type 5B construction and we see that the exterior wall is not required to be rated at all. If we would have put the imaginary lot line in the middle between the two buildings, the exterior wall on the new building would have been a minimum of one hour fire resistant rated. So as you can see, you can put the imaginary lot line anywhere between the two buildings to where it works to your best advantage. Now look at the option to where we treat both buildings on the same lot as one building. In the previous example, both buildings were the same type of construction, but in this new example, we have two buildings that are of different occupancies and of different type of construction. The pool hall is a type 2B construction and the insurance office is type 5B construction. The code states in section 503.1.2 and 704.3 that you can treat two or more buildings on the same lot as one building if the aggregate area of all of the buildings height and number of stories falls within the criteria of chapter 5 for a single building. When the buildings are of different occupancies or of different types of construction, you use the most restrictive occupancy or construction type. In our example, we have both different occupancies along with different types of construction. To determine the most restrictive, we look at table 503 entitled Allowable Height and Building Area. For an A3 occupancy of type 2B construction, we find that we can build up to two stories in height and a total of 9,500 square feet per floor. For a business occupancy of type 5B construction, we find that we can build up to two stories in height and a total of 9,000 square feet per floor. So the most restrictive of these two occupancies is the business occupancy of type 5B construction. 
In this example, both buildings are single story and the total aggregate area of both buildings is 4,700 square feet, which is less than the 9,000 allowable square feet. Therefore, these two buildings can be on the same lot and treated as one building, and neither exterior wall of these buildings would have to be fire resistant rated. I'm Frank Morris, and to find more tips on codes, go to our website at www.studythecode.com.